Greetings, my name is Ben, aka Downsize It, and I am joined here today with Social General Rob. How you doing? And we are going to finally test out Anakin. Um, the original plan was for me to run Dooku and Ventress, however, given that uh, when we're filming, we had to delay that one a couple weeks because of scheduling, and now that we're getting close to the Texas Open Online, that's going to be on June 10th, that Saturday. Um, that I'm going to be playing in, I want to, I need to practice with my fleet that I'm planning on bringing, or at least a variation of it, and I need to practice with it against Anakin. I've never played against Anakin. Yeah, so I never played Anakin, so... Correct. <laughs> so this will be um, the first of many tests, mm -hmm. and the list that Rob brought is pretty brutal, especially considering I have MSU, uh, and with Anakin's ability, my ships could be deleted very fast if I'm not careful. So this will be a good challenge and a good test. Um, of not only my fleet, but me facing off against Anakin fleets, which I'm sure will be abundant at the Texas Open online. Yeah. So, I um, want to remind everybody for the giveaway for May and June. It's the set of Downsize at Defense tokens, the new token and miscellaneous tray that Admiral Tater has made with the Downsize at Topper, and some Downsize at Dice from Baron of Dice. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in that, please subscribe and comment on all of my videos for May and June, and I'll be announcing the winner on July 1st. And I also want to remind everybody, because we kind of got off this, but oh. just remind everybody for the Downsize at Subscriber Challenge, if you want to challenge me to the game of Armada on TTS, please just mail me at, or email me at maildownsizeit at gmail.com. And uh, if, if, I've had, if I've had you on the list whenever it kind of fell off, um, just read and email me if you're still interested and you know let me know your time zone and your availability so that we can make things work because so I want to start doing I want to keep that going and be able to play with people that are subscribed to the channel and people that aren't around um, Northwest Arkansas and just around the world that's the nice thing about TTS so don't forget that the downsize at subscriber challenge so all right so coming up next, I'm going to go over the fleets in the mission, and then you're going to see Rob and I deploying in a sped-up fashion as we discuss our strategy and tactics in the pre-game interview. For the Empire, we have Admiral Sloan on a Raider 1 with the Corvus title. Two Architans light cruisers, one with Director Krennic and Slave Turrets, the other with Captain Nida and Turbo Laser reroute circuits. A Quasar Fire 1 with flight controllers, boosted comms, and expanded hangar bay. And a Gazanti cruiser with comms net. For squadrons, we have Merrick Steel, Colonel Jendon, and four TIE Defender squadrons. For the Republic, we have Anakin Skywalker on a Venator 2 with local fire control, flat guns, reactive gunnery, external racks, and DBY heavy turbo lasers. A Venator 1 with the Tranquility title, Hondo Inaka, local fire control, intensified firepower, flat guns, external racks, DBYs, and an Acclimator 2 with gunnery team, assault proton torpedoes, and swivel mount batteries. For squadrons, the GAR have four V-19 Torrent squadrons. For the mission, we were both at 400 points and had a roll-off, and Rob won the roll-off and chose to be second player. So I had to choose from his missions, which were Advanced Gunnery, Asteroid Tactics, and Solar Corona. I chose to go with Asteroid Tactics, so Rob will be placing all of the obstacles, excluding the station, and at the end of every round, Exegors will be placed touching different obstacles. And whenever um, a player run or a squadron runs over an asteroid, they can recover one of their non-scattered defense tokens in an exhausted state. Whereas Rob can do so without getting the effect of the obstacle by overlapping it, and they can actually recover the defense tokens in a readied state. So coming up next, Rob and I will be deploying in a sped up fashion as we discuss our strategy and tactics in the pre-game interview. Okay, so now that you've seen the fleets in the mission, um, you're going to see Rob and I deploying here in a sped up overlay. 
and now we're going to discuss our strategy and tactics for the game. And Rob, why don't you get us started off? All right. Well, being second player, luckily um, he got to. We had a roll off. Both had 400 points. Um, so he got to pick for my missions: um, advanced gunnery, asteroid tactics, and solar corona. Advanced gunnery and solar corona are kind of obvious of why I picked them. Um, <laughs> solar corona, so I could see where his fleet was going to be, um, and then advanced gunnery. So well, I get extra tax. Um, the one he picked though was Asteroid Tactics, which was good because now if I run over an asteroid, say, I can refresh or reclaim back one of my spent tokens, which going against Sloan is good. Um, and, so, and they don't affect me otherwise. Now, I'm trying Anakin out for the first time, and this fleet was designed by Kravik. Um, if you watch his channel, you see the actual design on here. A few minor changes. Um, but I was trying to figure out a way to use Anakin to his fullest. And I could have taken out the acclimator and put in a Pelta, for instance, for to help fuel the other ships to do things uh, and all that stuff. But after watching our last, um, oh my gosh, tournament, TXO tournament, we realized, and Ben and I, and of course the chat, realized that some of the Anakins did not have the firepower that they needed to do what they needed to do. And because they were probably being smart and bringing a little more squadrons than I am, um, matchstick was probably another thing that I wanted to bring, which I did not bring. So I decided, okay, Krabek, you're right, I'm gonna go with the Acclimator to give it a little extra punch. Um, at the time, um, Ben was gonna be playing the Separatists and playing uh, Ventress and Doku. So I really didn't change it up from that. Actually, I didn't change it up from that at all. Uh, so I kept it what it was. Those four V19s, they're the roadblock or speed bump for those wonderful squadrons you see across the table. Um, <laughs> go let them, guys. Hold them off. Uh, and do their best they can. Anakin is going to be interesting. I've never used Anakin before. Um, so we will see how we do with that. All of this, uh, you've already seen the fleet probably, Ben has put it up. Um, it is all dependent on Salvo. I mean, really. The acclimator is probably the only thing that is not completely dependent on salvo. Actually, yeah, it's not complete. Yeah. Um, it's got gunnery team on it, salt proton torpedoes, and silver mounted batteries. So it's coming in there and it's going to be getting hard. What I need to do, and I already know this one we were setting up, because Ben easily out deploys me, squadrons and ships, both. Um, I needed to go into the middle because if I went to one corner or the other, as Ben likes to do himself, um, I knew that Ben would pick the opposite corner for his ships and he wouldn't really have to worry about anything. Squadrons would come in, do their job, for Sloan does, and then he could send his ships in whenever he wanted to. And the long range ships, well, the Aquatons are. Um, so then he could just pick them off whenever he wanted to. So I placed in the middle to give me a better chance to get to one end or the other, depending on where he deployed. Um, so, uh, Acclimator is the going to be the brawler, and then the Ven One, Venator One, with uh, Tranquility, is going to be the is the battleship. We'll say. Um, not saying that it gets on a good ship. The Venator Two is good, mind you. But uh, it's a little bit, a little bit of it uh, doesn't have to be as close as the Ven One, which has black dice, so it has some blues, so it's able to go a little bit longer. So we shall see. Um, that's the basic strategy, really. It's basically going to be going after his, and he already knows this, so no surprise to him at all. He's going after his ships over there and trying to fend off the squadrons best I can. 
So if I can get a squad, if I can get a ships, I'm going to be okay. Do I, do I know that I'm going to lose one. I already know that. One's going to go down. Squadrons alone are going to make sure of that. Um, but I'm going to do my best to keep them up. Uh, and that's really about it. It's really that simple. And just spending on his three shot, three attack, uh, that's what's called, by like three attacks, calling it, but uh, three attack uh, things for Salvo and front and side, hopefully. I gotta get him the angle. That's gonna be the fun part. So, and they're space pigs, so they don't move as well. Ben? All right, so this fleet that I'm bringing today is a modification. It's the alternate version of the one I showed you guys during our live stream of TXO during um, the lunch break. Mm -hmm. And the primary difference was you know, taking out Vader as a defender who is a big damage dealer, but in doing so, making my Architons more consistent because they're my only ship damage dealers. In that version, the Architons only have slave turrets, no other mitigation. In this version, taking Vader out gives me the points so that I can get Krennic and Nita on my Architons because red dice can be very finicky and that'll allow me, them to be more consistent with their damage output. Um, so we'll see if that makes an, uh, a difference or an effect not having Vader on the board. Um, Vader gets no benefit from Sloan, but that's not why he's there. He's there to deal damage while the other defenders and Merrick get the Sloan benefit. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, it, it's, it's probably either going to be this version of this that I'm going to take to Texas Open online or the one that I showed you guys during the live stream of the Texas Open in person. And I'm hoping to be able to get some like maybe TTS matches with you guys, uh, get some people in to do some downsizes at subscriber challenges so I can practice. By the time this comes out, it'll be about a week and a half away. So, mm -hmm. And uh, also, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to practice at our own Ozark Mountain Tournament Series, which will be this Saturday. <laughs> so uh, if we have an odd... I, I only play if we have an odd number of players, so no one has a buy. So, with this particular mission, his missions, I actually was... Uh, Solar Corona was out right away because one of the main reasons why I'm built, trying to build my Sloan feet like this MSU, because it's different, I'm not used to it, and I want to try something new, but it was the deployment advantage. And solar corona and superior positions just negate that. So if I ever see those across the table, those are just automatically discarded. I will never pick them because deployment advantage is key for me with this fleet build. Um, I was actually thinking about advanced gunnery, primarily because the ship I would put advanced gunnery on, whichever one I pick, I might, I might pick Sloan and just have her run away and just not worry about um, doing double shots, but letting Rob not get double points, or on my Nita Architons, get him a double shot out the side, and if he dies, even the double points won't be that bad. But it's still risky giving Rob, because mm -hmm. that would allow him to do three shots out the front with Anakin, two normal, and then the Anakin salvo to hit again, and not letting it so he doesn't have to do uh, a double arc to get the triple shot. And, now, and with being MSU fleet, um, I'm already at risk that if I'm not careful, he could end me with a single activation. He could end me on a salvo because he can double salvo back yep. if I'm not careful with my accuracies and um, how I'm uh, positioning myself. So uh, that's why I went with Asteroid Tactics. It was the least of the, uh, it was the best choice of, of the bad decisions. <laughs> and with this current setup, I should be able to avoid everything entirely. Yeah. Um, as is what I usually try to do, uh, I like going with on the flanks, and because I had the deployment advantage, I was able to see where Anakin was, because he is actually my target. Uh, that's my goal, is to kill Anakin, um, who is right here. I deployed to his side, and to try to isolate him from the rest of the fleet, so I'm only engaging Anakin, and Rob is not able to use his other ships to attack me um, while I'm going after Anakin. Uh, I, I mean, I've said it ad nauseum the past like five to ten bat reps. It's it's Point defeat in ten. detail. Uh, yeah. Engage in the flanks, defeat in detail. Engage one enemy opponent at a time. It's just it's a standard military tactic that all militaries use, and uh, it's effective in Armada. Pulling it off is challenging, and in this one, it's going to be even more important that I isolate one ship at a time 
because of MSU, my Architans and my Quasar, and with Anakin's ability, he could drop a ship a turn with only one of his ships. He wouldn't even need to focus fire. Um, so I could go down very fast. So deployment, uh, not deployment, but uh, um, engagement order is going to be very important for me, making sure I'm maintaining my ranges, making sure I'm using my squadrons to their full benefit. And of course, whenever I'm doing Sloan, normally when I do Sloan, I try to go after the brace or the redirect. But for this one, it's going to be salvos all day because if I take away the salvos, Anakin does nothing. Right. So this will be my first time testing out against Anakin, putting my money where my mouth is. Um, my armchair quarterbacking and theory crafting is Anakin is very powerful, but he is one note. He's predictable. And this is, it is predictable. I know exactly yeah, it is. Yeah. what yeah. Rob wants to do and what Rob wants to use Anakin for. The, the uh, now the question is, can I exploit that predictability to my advantage? So we'll see what happens. Right. So coming up next, Rob and I are going to plan our dials and then we'll be back at the start of round one. Okay, here we are, start of round one. And as you can see here's I am on the flanks with my Quasar and Architans in formation. I'm gonna be using the Arkans kind of as blockers to the Quasar as well. So if Rob decides to choose to target the Quasar, it'll be obstructed. My uh, deployment distraction formation and uh, everybody in, that you see here is obviously going to be shifting to the left. And then Sloan over here who I'll be keeping out of the battle entirely because she could very easily be one-shotted with Anakin's ability. Do not want to risk losing my commander. And everybody is going speed one on my side except for my Gazanti going speed two. So on the right here um, is the Tranquility, Tranquility the non-Anakin, going at speed 3, and then we have the Echimator at speed 3. Then on the left here is Anakin on speed 2. Alright, starting off with Sloan. Navigate, taking a token, and moving at speed 1. Alright. Up next, well up first, is the Acclimator. It is a navigation dial, which I will be using. I'm going speed 3, staying, but I'm using the dial to click at the 1, and then the natural click at the 2. Just to get it up in there, gotta get the space pig moving. Okay, my Gazanti to navigate, using it as a dial. Speeding up to speed 3, getting extra click at the 1. And I may hit this defender, which I do. Where would you like to? Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Let what, me what, see. What a shame. Darn. Where should I put this? I'll put it on the back corner of the Gazanti. Oh no. Yep, that's going to ruin my plans. Yep. Totally ruin your plans. <laughs> All right. Up oh, next is Tranquility. Tranquility is a navigation dial. I'll be using it. Doing the same thing as I do with the acclimator, um, using the dial at um, one, and then doing the natural two, and just keep them come on right on up. Okay, going with my quasar. It is a navigate, and I will use it as the dial. I'm going to speed up to speed two, giving an extra click at the one, maneuvering like so. All right. Up oh, next is Anakin. It is a navigation dial, which I will be using. Um, I'm just going to do a natural click at the one, staying at speed two, trying to keep the fleet together, getting it closer. Okay, we have Director Krennic to navigate. Using it, speeding up, extra click at the one, doing just a little side shuffle here. Then I'm just going to do the exact same thing with Nita in formation. Imperial flying at its best. Yes. So that is it for round one. We have squads, but those will be done off screen. And then at the end of that, Rob will place the Exegors. For those that might not have remembered, who do so know, Exegors and this one don't come out till the end of round one. 
And also something I forgot to mention was that Rob is getting two pass tokens, so that could become key in this game. So we'll be back at the start of round two. Okay, start of round two. I shifted my squads over, start getting them back into formation. Xgorth was placed to grab a couple, this defender on the right and Jinden. Another Xgorth placed out of the way, so I doesn't have to worry about running over it. And then we also have V19s over on this corner. And for my first move, will be Corvus. To navigate, I use it as a dial. I already have a token, so I don't need it. And this is just gonna be what Sloan is doing all game. All right, so up first is the Tranquility. The Tranquility going speed three. It's a uh, navigation dial, which I will be using to click at the one. And I'm going to still going speed three, come flying up here. Oh, I think I don't need this. Oh, yep. Hold on a moment. I, I put it on the wrong side. That was not Rob's fault, that was my fault. I'm doing a side shuffle here. Yep. I'm trying to keep my fleet within together, but not clogging each other. Alright, my carrier, Squadron Command, taking a token. Currently at speed two. Maneuver like so. All right. Up first is the Acclimata. It is a navigation dial, which I will be using. But first, we have a shot at the Gazanti from the front. It's a long range shot and it's obscured. Uh, obscured. So I'll be uh, dropping one red die, which actually is with three red dice. Nope, looking at, I'm sorry, look at the Ven too. My bad. No, it's the Acclimator too I'm looking at. Yeah, it's three red dice, so I only have two red dice. So, I'll be firing two red dice. Okay, two reds. Hit and a blank. Well, we really can't do anything about that, and I did forget to use my little part of mounts, but, um, because that's to be before you use a command. Yeah, when you reveal the command. Yeah, when you reveal the command. So I did not use that. Um, and I don't have anything else to do anything with. So that's what's happening, which you're going to scatter. I'm actually going to evade to evade, cancel okay. it. Oh, that works. Yep, evade to cancel. Alrighty. Alrighty. Up is the acclimator. It's uh, navigation. Okay, I'm doing a click with the dial at one and a natural at the two. Moving right up there. I did hit the debris field. Did it debris. So we're gonna take it off the... Uh, could take two off. Yeah, you guys, that's the only thing I don't like this. Two off the back, which hurts me bad. Okay, going with my Gazanti. Opportunity is presenting itself. Squadron command, and actually double check here, am I in medium range of your dude? I am only out the front. All right, so um, we're gonna be activating this defender and Jendon because they're the ones that are in range of this Exegorth and that are in danger. I don't want, do not want them getting attacked. But also, use this opportunity to go after the uh, Acclimator. Start, we're gonna get some Sloan luck here so we'll see what happens um, the first move will be my defender who will be coming up this way one to get out of obstruction and also to get out of exegorth make sure he's out of exegorth range and as far back as possible for activation next round And be throwing one into the front of the Acclimator. The Acclimator has four defense tokens. All right, so Defender, coming on in. It's hit. 
I will um, Jen didn't come in too, he said. Or Jen's being activated, should say. Mm-hmm. Um Take it on the front. Oh wait, we take it you shoot the front, right? Shooting the front. Yep, take it on the front. Wanna make sure I'm getting the right one first. And then I will also though I will spend my Oh you gotta move over there. My um salvo. Flat. Yep. And it's flat. It's blue black. Blue black. And wait, does Anakin do anything with this? Uh, Anakin, I believe, is all attacks. You get to add all salvo attacks. Just want to make sure. Cause it's not yes, you get to add a dice. I will add the uh, blue. No, I don't need a blue. I'll add a. Um, I guess it's a regular defender, right? Mm-hmm. I'll add a black. Okay. Accuracy two hits. Oh. Accuracy is not done, so. Alright, so down to four. Okay, then Jendon's move. You get Jendon out of range of this Exogorth. Well, it's not as big of a deal now that he's already activated. Because that's the thing about Exogorths. If they do damage, they activate the ship. So it's one of those where it's important to activate your squads before the Exogorths attack. That'll get me in range and have him do the double tap. And also just need to double check that he's in range for activation next round. And relaying, he is. All right, he's gonna tell that defender, do it again. Crit, I'm gonna reroll with Sloan to try to fish for an accuracy, and I got it. Let's get rid of that salvo. Then, we are going to do a front to front from the Gazanti. And I'm just going to double check that it is clear, going yellow dot to yellow dot, it is. So, front to front from the Gazanti. It's a hit. Front to front. Uh, take it. Take it on the front. All right, then for movement, I need to make a sacrifice play with my Gazanti because I don't want to disrupt this squad ball because then Rob could place him in range of the Exogorth, which would mess up my plans. So basically, Gazanti is coming in, ready to die. So I'm hitting the debris field and the Exogorth. So Exogorth, I have to take one. So we'll take it here. Debris field, I have to take two. So we'll take it on the back, plus a face down. But that just means that I am not disrupting my squats. Okay, we're going to be going with Nita first to say concentrate fire. Oh, by the way, Rob passed. Yes. The reason why I'm doing Nita first is because after his movement, Rob's shot from the Venator from Anakin will be obstructed. If I went with Krennic first, he could potentially have a clear shot. So I'm going to try to just mitigate the damage coming in. So we're going to start, and both my shots on the Architons are going to be obstructed into the Acclimator, but we're going to be just doing work with what we can. It is a concentrate fire. And the Acclimator is down to two shields in the front, no shields in the back, and no salvo remaining. Still has his other defense tokens. So, starting with three reds, obstructed down to two reds. Very good start. Con fire. And we will go ahead and maximize um, TRC to make it five damage. So, what do you have over there, anyways? Do you have a couple doubles or something? Two doubles and a one. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going to brace it. Race to three. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to redirect uh, two to the starboard side. Two to the starboard? I mean, uh, port side, sorry. Yeah. I keep getting those sides confused. Yeah. So two to the port and one off the front. Yep. Come on now. Alright, then I have no other shots, because this one, I could do double arcs if I set that up, because he does not have slave turrets, but that is not the case for this shot. Movement, currently speed 2. They are just going to be going straight. 
to ensure that my formation is maintained and that Krennic won't ram on his movement. So, just playing a little leapfrog with Krennic here. All right, so up next is Anakin. Uh, we are in range, long range, of a front shot obscured. So only a one red die coming out. What's the dial? Navigation dial, sorry. And I will be using it. Uh, All right, so one red die coming in. It's an accuracy. Cool, accuracy, uh, never mind. Okay, so now though, I'm gonna use a salvo and I'll be using Anakin's salvo ability. So, I only get a red and a blue because I do have flat gun. Is it flat guns? Yeah, flat guns. Um, so it gives me the extra range for the blue. Uh, I have to take one out. So I will take the red out, but then I'm going to be adding in a die and I'll add in a black. So blue. No, you have to add in what's in your dice pool. So I'll add in a blue. Yep, yeah, so first the shot. Oh, shoot. It's a hit. Then adding in a blue with Anakin's ability, another hit, and I scatter. Yep, hey, make you use it. So, not that it matters much, but hey, you can try the ability. All right, up next is, uh, well, Anakin. Uh, Anakin's, uh, as I said, navigation dial I'm using, but I'm only gonna go straight in hopes that I'm able to get one of the Arcatons, double art maybe, or at least get a couple shots off. Landing on the asteroid does not affect Rob. No, nope. he refreshes his salvo. Yep. Okay, now for Krennic with his obs obstructed shot. Concentrate fire into the front of the acclimator. Let's see if we can get some hull damage on this shot. Set up for next turn. So starting with three, down to two because of the obstruction. Accuracy blank so far. Slave turrets. Crit, concentrate fire, blank. Mm. So I will use Krennic's ability to reroll both blanks. I am going to stop. I think I am going to go. You no, know, actually, I'm going to reroll the accuracy too, because I wouldn't mind you discarding your stuff. So Krennic's ability, with the con fire dial, I can reroll as many red dice as I want. It's actually. Still two blanks, but I got bad. a double. So yeah, three that, damage. Yeah, that does make up for it. With the crit. Yep. Three damage with the crit. Shield on the front is one. One, thank you. Could move and spend that, move it to that. Well, Space Pig, you're doing kind of your job. Spend the redirect, and I will move them to the... Be on all your side. shields are down. Yeah. So no hole damage. Redirect is gone, which it is useless now, because you have no shields. So right. That was a good spend. All right, and then movement for Krennic. Again, just being in formation with Nita. And they're, they're doing parallels. Playing Leapfrog Parallels. Squad phase, Exegorus have no attacks. So I was able to get my guys out of range and then there will be no engagement in the squad phase for any attacks. So we'll do that off screen and then we'll be back. Uh, I have moved everything. I'll make sure you don't forget Sloan. I did not. Yep, then we'll be back at the start of round three. Okay, hey, here we are, start of round three. My squad's shifted over, Rob's shifted up. Rob replaced an Exegorth on this debris field in the mess, and the other one out of the way. At the start of the round, Rob did Hondo. He took a Confire and a Squadron. Confire went on Tranquility to activate Intensify. Squadron went on Anakin. And I put my engineering on Nita, who's the back right Architons here, and gave the nav to my Quasar. And for my first activation, 
We are going with Krennic as we continue to put fire into the Acclimator. And looks like I only have... Oh, I do have the side. Yes. That's important because the side shot, I believe, is unobstructed. It is. So we'll be doing a side-to-side -side from Director Krennic. And it is a concentrate fire. Let's see what we can do to this acclimator, which has no shields, a brace remaining, and seven hull. Okay, so we'll be starting with three red dice. Pretty good roll so far. I like that accuracy. Accuracy, crit, hit, slave turrets. Another accuracy, which I don't need. And concentrate, um, concentrate fire for a hit. And then I'll use Krennic to reroll the accuracy for a double. Nice. So no brace. Take five with the crit, and there's nothing I can nothing be I done. Can do. Nothing I can do. Nope. Yep. So our crit is compartment fire. You cannot ready defense tokens. It's not really going to matter for you here. Nope. And then four face down. Two hole remaining mm -hmm. for the acclimator. That was a very good shot. Good going, Crank. Don't need to crank those. Crank did his thing. Yes. I'm very pleased with that. Rolls two accuracy. Oh, I'll just roll the roll on. <laughs> and then movement. Going speed two. This is where it's time to start turning. So keep my guns in an orbiting pattern. Very different, different style of play with Architons than normally with mm -hmm. Empire. Um, but I'm getting more and more used to it. it just requires practice. All right. So the acclimator has a concentrate fire dial, dial. I am using it. And I will be firing first at the, because I'm using also for gunnery teams. Um, and I've done my- using? Swivel mounts, swivel mounts yes. and swivel mounts have gone to the front, of course. And yep, I will be basically doing as you see where they're at. I'll be firing at the side of the Kasanti and the is that the side of the back we got there. Any Whichever one you want, you have a minus side on both. And your full shield there, where it doesn't matter. Uh, I will do. I think I'm going to do the side. <clears throat> okay, so which shot are you going to be taking first? Oh, let's shoot the uh, Gazanti first. Okay, so, so you get three reds, a blue, two blacks, and you take out one. I'll take out a red, please. Okay, so two reds, two blues, blue and a, oh no, one blue, one blue. two blacks. Right, so we'll start with. Uh, yep. All right. That's what we have so far. That's good. I then you intensify firepower. Well, first you want to start oh, adding in dice. Yep. So you swivel mount dice. So I'll swivel mount in a. I'm going to either do red or black. So. Well, let's do a red, hopefully for that accuracy. No, I'll crit though. So that's always a good thing. Um, intensify firepower then. That's oh, still got dice to add, especially if you want a gunner team. Bounce straight fire. Okay, I'll add in a, I'll ask people for the same thing again. So I'll add in a oh, blue. I can add in blue, what am I talking about? Accuracy. Nice. I'm dead. Boom. Don't know why I didn't think about adding in a blue layer earlier. Anyways, because you couldn't. Solo mounts has to be from an adjacent right. hull zone. You don't have any blues on the adjacent hull zone. Well, All right. Was What's it? Crit was thruster control, but yeah, does not matter. It only matters if it's structural to pull more cards out. All right. So Kazanti goes down. Sacrifice made. <laughs> 
Now for front to side of the Architons, three red dice, down to two because of obstruction. Crit blank. Okay, well, we're gonna, for the silver mounts, we're going to add in a, a red, just to, yeah, I don't know, add in a black, actually. Not to say, Rob. No, 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 so, ten spike five part of a hit. Oh wait, I can do a, do a crit. It's a hit. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, it has to be. Make, make sure. Single dice. So, yeah. um, I'm not gonna burn anything yet. So I'll just spend this, get rid of the hit crit. So no APTs, and then redirect. I'm gonna redirect to my front. Okay, clicking at the two, <coughs> the natural two. So all I can do, I'm just going to fly on speed 3, come up behind Nita. Oh, well, I'm going to... Did I hit Jendon? Yes. No, I hit Jendon, so... Which is actually a better thing, probably, for Ben. Yep, let's make him a little bit closer. Okay, and we are going to go with Nita. Here's a Concentrate Fire, and we're going to start with a rear shot into the front of the acclimator and see if that'll be enough to take him out. Rob has two health remaining, but still does have a brace. <clears throat> so I'll get a blue-black, or I mean red-black. For two damage, do I want to TRC this one? I mean, that would guarantee it, so yep. Yeah. We'll spend my unexhausted redirect, turn the red into a double for three damage, so even bracing to two, right. we'll do the job. Mm -hmm. Last acclimator we knew the well. Did his job. Now, a very risky proposition, if I want to attack Anakin, because I am in medium range, which means I'll get his full Savile dice back, and since he has reactive gunnery, I won't be able to stop all of his Savile potential, even with two accuracies. <clears throat> and that means I'm going to be taking eight dice back. Um, and I don't know if I want to take that hit yet. It's, but it sucks because it's kind of wasting a shot. So, you know what, I am going to risk it, I'm going to bring my defense dice over here because I will be taking a salvo, and then a double salvo most likely, we'll see if I can survive this shot, but at the very least I don't want to waste my con fire and I want to get damage on Anakin now, so we're going to have to work it. Again, it might be that Nita must be sacrificed to eventually take out Anakin. I just can't countenance wasting four red dice with my con fire not being used. So yes, this is a medium range shot. Unless I want to try to, if I have Arc on his side, let me see if I have Arc on his side. I might take the long range shot because that would allow me to I'm going to reduce two net dice coming back to me. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So this is what Anakin makes you guys consider. Mm -hmm. Because of he has flat guns, and because of the double salvo potential with adding dice to salvo, I want to attack at long range. And also to help me focus fire on the hull zone that I'm going to be hitting next turn. So we're going to be doing actually a side-to-side -side now on the Anakin. And we'll see what kind of retaliation I get for this kind of shot. So, starting with three reds. And I've already TRC'd, so I can't TRC again. So this is just a straight up roll. 
On fire. Very good roll. It has been hot. Actually, both of them have been hot. So, five damage. Alright, five damage. Ooh, this is a tough one out. My side. Alright, so. Yeah, I'm gonna chance it. Brace redirect. So brace first. Knocking it down to three. Well, so you spend all your tokens first. Okay. Brace redirect and then. All right. So this is a question. How do do I spend both if I want to shoot both nope. of my things or just one? We're just doing a salvo. Okay. It's normal salvo right now. Normal salvo then. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Brace redirect salvo. So first, when you take the damage, you're taking three. Where's it going? Okay. Three. So you hit my side. <clears throat> um, one on the side and two on the back, please. Okay. All right. And this is also just, folks, it's important to know proper sequence of events. So this attack sequence is now done. It is complete. We now go into the Savo attack back. This is a brand new attack sequence. Okay. So Savo, and you said is not medium range, right? Nope, we're at long on this one. Long. So when you get a red blue. Yep, red blue to start. Two hits. And then I will add in a blue. Hit. Okay. Um, Tens of five bar doesn't really do much for me at the moment. Because I can't really change any of those. Um, oh wait. If I do have DB. Yep, you've got DB wise. So I could turn one to a crit. Mm -hmm. Force you to evade one, which your evades are at. Both are exhausted. Exhausted. Make you. So I'll turn my blue one into a crit. Okay. Just choosing one, basically. Um, okay, so three damage with a crit. And that's everything you can do. Yep. So I'm actually going to go ahead and. It's not time to start burning it. I want to wait till the next one. So I'm just going to redirect with my green redirect. Send two to the back, one to the side. And now this entire attack sequence is over. So at the end of an attack, and it can spend a salvo to attack again. Yes. So this is where you would spend a salvo. And I will spend the salvo. I'm assuming that one. The green one, yes. Yeah. And now back into a brand new attack sequence. So, blue and a red. Yep. Hit and a blank. What are we adding? Uh, blue. For a crit. And I'll turn the red into a crit. So, I have that. I am going to, another reason why I want to be at long range is for my evades work. I'm going to burn to get rid of the crits and take one on the shield. So, I will take that as a successful Attack into Anakin, mm -hmm. suffering no whole damage. Because <clears throat> that was a very real and scary possibility. And now for my movement, going speed two. It's going to mirror Krennic like we've been doing. as I can and hopefully getting out of that front arc of Rob's which I think I did yeah you did I don't need to get any laser to see that all right because it's backwards to me right now all right up next is An Anakin it is an engineering dial which I will be using <clears throat> and I will be moving just so we can get this out of the way. Uh, raise up one shield on the starboard side and one shield on the rear. I'll also be using my squadron token to activate one squad. Okay. 
And then uh, I'm just getting oh, I'm just getting everything out of the way first. I will be shooting my side shot into front of Nita. I mean the side of Nita, my bad. So into her starboard side. And so we just, we'll start from there. So do I start the squadron first or do I start with the squadrons go first? Alright. So the squadron that's forward close to the defender on four health there. Mm -hmm. How far is he? Wait, well I can move and move. So it's gonna move forward up to one away. Of this guy? Yep. Oh, doesn't move much. You were almost in range. So I was almost. If you want to be just out. Yep, barely just out. One. out. Okay. So that we have a little more room to maneuver. Okay. Okay. And they are two blue and one red. Going into my four health defender. Yep. Okay. Two damage. Okay. That's two. Down to two. All right. Now for your side shot. All right, and then I will also be doing probably a flak out the front since I can't shoot anything in the front. So what are we doing first? So let's do the flak out the front at the, the defender. Let's just play with that. Two blacks. Dead. Poof. One down, only one, two, three, four to go, plus Jendon. <laughs> and Merrick. Well, I counted him as the four, but... Mm, yes. I was saying, All right, of, side shot. Side shot now. We're going into the side of Nita. Yep, two blues, two reds. We have... Crit, two hits and a blank. All right. Well, a blank, we're turning into a crit. Intensify. You fire. cannot. No, I cannot. Hit. You can Sorry. hit with intensify. Hit. Sorry, my bad. So, do that. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I'm going mm -hmm. to re-roll both reds. Uh, actually, I have to burn it anyway. Yep, we'll re-roll both reds, burning my evade. All right, took the crit away, so I have one health remaining. And I'm going to do something that I might regret, but... I'm going to burn the <clears throat> one of the salvos uh -huh. so I can fire at you. Yep. I'm at medium, so oh wow, this is. And I'm guaranteed dead. Yeah. So medium with flat guns, you get disco dice. Yeah. And with DBYs, you're guaranteed to get a hit, and that's all you need. And I'm dead. And then I'd add and die with. Yeah, you'd add a die with Anakin. Anakin. So. so. So yeah. But we now have a salvo gone. And need is gone. So. Yep, Anakin, again, he can put out a lot of firepower, but he now only has one salvo left. So... He's a regular vendor. Um, what's that? He's a regular vendor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's now back to being a regular vendor. Okay, so navigate, uh, turning at the natural one and the natural two, going to the starboard side, and yep, well, the worst... Thing could happen to me, happened to me. Export into refield, or do you want to take the damage? Okay, so we'll take the damage from the um, escort, the one to the back shield. And then the two from the refield? On to the starboard, uh, port side, sorry. Starboard would be dumb. Yes, that would be unwise. Very. Okay, all right, time for the quasar to do his thing. It is a squadron command. I don't need the squad token anymore because a defender died. That's okay. <laughs> You'll still get all these five. And let's start working on Anakin. Let's hopefully start stripping some tokens. I think where I want to hit him. Think about next turn's activation with my Architons. I think I want to focus on the front, just to get those shields down and get them out of the way. There's still a lot to be done. I think. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Alright, yep, so we're going to start focusing on the front, and I'll start moving squads in. Hopefully start stripping tokens. So first, we will... 
think of where my... I got plenty of range for next turn. Gotta think about where you're gonna be next turn with your carrier, but Lucid Comms makes it nice and easy to keep you in range. Yep, move this defender here, and yep, we're gonna be going everything into the front. You guys aren't getting too... Alright. Okay, defender! It's a hit! Shield. Okay. Next defender. Accuracy. Let's get rid of that salvo. No more Anakin. No. Next defender. Accuracy. Let's get rid of that brace. <laughs> Actually, redirect. We oh, can't move damage around. <laughs> I'll be focus fire. Then Merrick. Then I'll just go and mark Jendon and move Jendon back for relay purposes if needed to tell Merrick attack twice. So I'm just doing that. Out of order. So Merrick twice now. First one. Um, so we'll turn that to a crit. So hit crit. Okay. Uh, you're going to do it again. So it's probably the last time I get to use this. Probably got three shields in the front. Mm hmm. Tuffy, I yeah, I'm gonna take it on the front. Take it on the front. Yep. Okay. Shields down to one. Merrick again. Same shot. Hit crit. Okay. I'll burn my brace. Get rid of the crit and front shields down. Yep. Alrighty. I'm very pleased now that Anakin is neutered. But, but he did his thing. He did kill Nita. Nita. And that's five power off the board. And a defender. <laughs> and, and a defender. Inadvertently. Not in medium range for my quasar, so my quasar is going to move. I'm going to. I think I'm staying at speed two because I want to have that option, but I'm going to intentionally ram. Go pump. Yes, so I'm going to intentionally ram. So hit here, that way I can legally cross the tool by coming back. Both take one. Basically just keep myself in ideal position for activating squads, continuing my assault on Anakin's flagship. All right, up is Tranquility. Tranquility has a concentrate fire dial, which I will take the token. And I am going to be using just moving. And basically just gonna click at the natural two and hopefully avoid this debris field. Yep. <clears throat> and avoid it. Woohoo! That's some Republic flying. Yes. They're getting as good as the Imperials. Corvus is a nav. Not using it because I already got a token. Right. Staying straight. Sloan doing her thing. And then squad phase, it's just Rob's ships. There'll be uh, no Exegorth attacks. No one's no Exegorth in range. No squad attacks because Rob's squads are not rogues. So we'll let him do those movements off camera. And then we will be back at the start of round four. Okay, start of round four. This is where... Rob moved his V-19s. One of them is locking down one defender, and then the one that's closest is locking down everyone except Jinden. Well, and also technically Merrick, because Merrick has grit. And then the Exegorus, Rob just placed them out of the way. And start of the round, Rob used his Confire token on Tranquility to reactivate Intensify Firepower. And we're just going to leave it right here, because I already know what I'm doing first. It is Krennic. With his final act in this game, because then he will be out of any kind of engagement potential. 
We'll take a shot side to unshielded front of Anakin and get as big a hit as possible <laughs> before he disengages. And it is, of course, a concentrate fire. No. And this is now a, you could say, neuter to Anakin. No defense tokens. So no potential of a salvo. So starting with three reds. Don't need that accuracy. Good thing I've got Krennic, which is why I brought him. <laughs> Slaved. Con fire. And then Krennic reroll. Okay. Could have been better, but it was actually, you know, with red dice, I'll take that. Right. Four damage. Well, with the crit. Yep. Crit is starting disruption. You cannot resolve critical effects. Oh, well. And then three face down. So five health remaining for Anakin. And then Krennic will be flying away. Don't get those shields, too. What's that? Don't get to take away the shields. You have no shields. Oh, you're showing the front. Never mind. My bad. My bad. And maneuvering. Like, Still might be in range. So. Well, no, it depends on where I move. Depending on where you go, I might actually have a shot next turn. Mm -hmm. All right. Up first is Anakin. Anakin is a concentrate fire dial, which I will be using. And it is going to be a flak out the front and the side. The front I can flak everybody. Um, the side I can only flak one. That one right there. So that will be with? double flaked. Uh, let's start with the single guy out on the, oh, the guy out on the side there. So doing the side shot? Doing the side shot first. Do it. Okay. Now we'll do the front shot on him as well. Two hits. Okay. Okay, starting out, let's keep it on the front, I guess we'll just say. Let's just uh, shoot Jendon. Do anything else? What, adding in a... You have a con fire, con fire. and you have X-Rex. Yeah, I know, I'm saving X-Rex. Okay. And same with the con fire? Yep. Okay. All right, who we do next? Jendon? So I'm gonna start with Jendon first, yep. Just okay. two black. Two hits. That's it. Two That's hits. It. Race to one. That's fine. This guy? Okay, yep. Regular dude. One hit. Next guy. Regular dude? Yep. One hit. Alright. Now Merrick. And Merrick. And we do everything. So, Merrick. One. one hit. Okay. Now we'll add in x Rex. X Rex. One hit. <laughs> and then we'll add in the uh, concentrate fire. No hit. Ah, ah. crap. If only you had uh, ordinance experts. Brace to one. That yeah. was really unfortunate. That was. That was. I mean, black dice should be hitting better than that. Yep. All right. So moving, uh, going speed two. I click naturally at the one going port and the two going starboard. Trying to hopefully not run into my own stuff and hopefully not run into Merrick, which... Yep, you missed him. And which is nice. Okay, got my Quasar, Squadron Command, as well as barely in medium range at my side to assist in trying to take Anakin down. First thing we need to do is deal with these pesky squads. So this guy is touching everybody except Jendon. And the guy, you can't see him, he's just off screen, is only touching this guy. Um, and this guy, I didn't take the damage right, he should be down to two. Two health remaining. He's probably going to die, because I don't think I can get him free. The first thing we need to do is do some work on this guy. So, with my flight controllers, I'll get three blues, two blacks. And we are going to start with this guy in the back. Onto this V19. I'll make sure you guys can at least see that V19. Oh, you can see everybody. Good. Yeah, you can see everybody. Yeah. All right. Three blues, two blacks. 
Uh, four damage, almost one shot at him. Mm -hmm. Then we will do this guy. Just need one damage. And got him. Easily. More than enough. So he goes down. That frees this guy up to move because he's no longer locked down. And I am going to move him. I don't know if I can get completely out of lockdown range. Actually, I could. Yeah, but you guys are slow. Gotta move him back. To stage for next round. I know this is off screen, but basically moving him to the port side of my quasar. Actually, it's just, bar it's just barely off screen. And then, all right. Well, let's do this guy who has to take him out. He's on two health. Um, if I get a perfect roll, I could get him out of harm's way. Mm -hmm. I do have the opportunity with flight controllers. Three blues, two blacks. Still a good roll, three damage. I don't know, Rob might whiff with this counterattack next turn. Or on the squad phase, I mean. <laughs> I was gonna say, what counterattack? They are right. on A-wings. <laughs> so now, Time for Merrick to do his thing. I need to see the front, so I do need to move him first and then have Jinden tell him to attack again. So we will do that. Scooch him back just to be barely in distance one, like so. And we'll turn that to a crit, so double crit. What do I can do about it? It is a structural. So that's the structural and then the other damage. I think that's it. No, you still have two health, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, two health remaining. Get okay. oh, flip over X Rex. What's that? Keep flip over X Rex since it was used. Yep. Thanks. Alright. Um, because of that, mm, this is taking a risk. Well not really. I'm first player. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna have Jenden. Tell this guy to attack him again. This Anakin should be on death's door, at least for next turn. And got this V19. Then I'm going to have Jinden shift just a little bit. He doesn't need to shift much. Yeah, just shift a little bit back. I already, did, already moved him. Shifting back. About like so. And then we've got my medium range side to front of Anakin, which will be two blues. For two damage, and that'll be it. That's what we need. Movement time. And for movement, I need to be mindful of tranquility coming in all fresh faced. So I will stay at speed two. And let me yeah, you can see. So you can see a little bit better where I'm going. Yep, yep should be good there. It might be coming in. Yep. Perfect. All right. All right. Up is tranquility. It's a concentrate fire, which I take the token. And I'm just going to move right on up. Bloop. All right, and all that's left is squad phase. Um, Rob has two squads left. They are um, not in an engagement, so we'll do that off screen. Exogorus, of course, no attacks. So we'll be back at the start of round five. All right, start of round five. Intensify goes off again. Exogorus. Um, the only one that matters is this one moved over here to potentially threaten my Architons for movement. And he brought his V-19s in to lock down some of my defenders and Jenden. And we are just going to stay here because it will be the Quasar going first. Basically we're just going to be doing some cleanup on these squadrons before we disengage. Because it is uh, mathematically impossible for me to kill Tranquility in the time remaining with my firepower that I can bring to bear. Okay, first squad, we're going to bring in this dude from the back to, so he can get wherever I need him to be, really. This 
just want him just barely touching. Okay, and we'll go after this V19 here. Three blues, two blacks. Um, oh, so one thing I, re I realized last turn, mm -hmm. I did three blues, two blacks with the Jenden double tap from this guy. Um, I should have only been two blues, two blacks, but I had enough hits on just the black dice. Okay. So I'm pretty sure. I think I had it. I think I had it. I had plenty. So you did more than enough. Did I mean, more than enough. I, yeah. I believe that. But yeah, I shouldn't have been able to add in flight controllers because that would not have happened through the Jenden double tap. So anyway, this is not the Jenden double tap. It does get flight controllers. Uh, not very good hit. Only two. Both blacks were blanks. All right, then we are going to do um, Merrick. And since he has grit, he can move if he wants to, which I do want to just get him in position. And also getting out of black flak range of Tranquility. And we're gonna work on this guy still. Three blues, two blacks. Just need three damage and got three damage. Nice. Technically four, because I could have changed one with Merrick. <laughs> oh, actually, not one that mattered though. So yeah. So anyway, then we'll go ahead and do a Jend and reroll with Merrick on this guy. This time it'll be two blues, two blacks, because I do not get flight controllers on this one. Um, two damage, but then I'll use Merrick's ability to turn that to a hit crit to make it three damage. And then we'll move Jenden. Jenden has good. Like so. And then we're going to do this defender. Does Jenden have grit? What? Does he have grit? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jenden can't move. He doesn't have grit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only Merrick. Yep. Good call out. Um, that's all right. Jenden's not in danger of flak. No. So this guy, three blues, two blacks. Need two damage and got two damage. Nice. Now I can move dudes. Yep. The important thing is to get these guys that are in danger of dying. Well, he's not in danger of dying. He's almost full health. But why bother? Right? It's this guy that needs to get out of flak range. And then movement, staying at speed two. And just continuing to do disengagement maneuvers. Moving like so. Okay, so we are all finished up and we tallied the points mm -hmm. and it came out to I got 285 and Rob got 104. Right. So that would be an 8-3 victory for tournament play. Eight tournament points for me, three for Rob. And Rob, why don't you give me your thoughts on the match and Anakin in general? Well, the match I liked, so let's start with that. So I enjoyed the match. Um, it was, I don't know, I think for both of us, it was a closer match than our later match, our earlier matches. And I felt better on my maneuvering, which is I've been trying to get better at. Um, deployment, um, I already made one mistake by putting the acclimator right in the middle. I should have put Anakin in the between um, Tranquility and um, the acclimator. That way he would have been guarded on each side and Ben would have to choose one side or the other. Most likely Ben would have shown the acclimator as it was easier to destroy. Um, so anyways, um, that was my major, major, major problem. Um, or mistake, I should say. The, the V19s did great. They did better than I thought, to be honest. They held Ben back and they took out at least one. one. Took out one. That's right. There's one right there. Um, 
and they were able to just delay him for a little bit. Uh, as for Anakin, so Anakin is powerful, as we saw, um, but he concentrates on one thing, and that's Salvo. All my upgrades were basically Salvo um, related, where normally I like to give him like some defensive stuff, some sort of way, you know, like ECM for instance would have been nice at one point, um, or even put more squads in, um, stuff like that. Probably could do it by taking out the acclimator, but at the same time, the acclimator did really uh, did, did well for what it's supposed to do. Um, the gunnery team loved it, got to use that. But uh, Anakin, he's not that hard, folks, because people are going to use him as they should go to his strength, of course, but his strength is his weakness. Sloan did work on him. She did. And this was an MSU fleet, so you can imagine if it was a uh, Psy Moon or something in there, an ISD anyways, in there, and with an Arcaden and, uh, what do you call that, the uh, Gazanti, right? Uh, it probably would have been a little quicker even, and this was quick, if you look at it. Movement-wise, I, I think I did good in the movement. At the end, you saw us just moving really quickly, um, but we were doing it to practice. I was doing the practice because these are ships that I don't normally use. Um, and, uh, you know, I mentioned to Ben, I said, you never know, in your tournament coming up, you might want to practice with the Arcaton moving it and stuff like that. You might want to practice, just practice. So we decided to go all the way. Even though he knew he couldn't take me out and I knew I couldn't do anything else to him. So. I... I don't think I, I would choose Bale, Plukun, or Lunab, Lumara, Lumanara, sorry, um, over Anakin any day. They're more versatile um, and they're just, I think, better commanders, personally. But again, I've only used them once and in only this variation right here, which, again, thank you, Krevik, does work out well, um, but it's a, it's a fun list. I guess a fun gimmick list, I would say, more than anything else. So I don't think you have to fear Anakin as much as people think you should. You gotta watch him, don't get me wrong. I mean, Ben could have made one wrong mood over or moved one ship at the wrong time. Um, as you saw, he's moving his Arcadins very carefully. And uh, it, it, it could have meant something. I mean, he, uh, Nita was out. And Krennic, if Krennic was in the wrong spot, actually I think losing Krennic would have been worse. Than Nita. So, and if his Quasar wasn't continually moving and uh, somehow I got within range or he moved something else differently, different time, say he moved Corvus, I don't know, before it for some reason, besides off the edge there. But uh, it, it could have meant the pr problem for him. I did not get a chance to use my other pass token. Um, I don't know if there was another chance. I, the one I did use it at was a good time. Um, the second time, there probably was something, but all his stuff was moving so fast and out of range, I needed to move my guys and move them quick. Which is why I came in full, full for, um, why I came in fast. So, yeah. The V19s did well. I was really happy with them. Better than I thought. And, uh, yeah. So I gotta say, once he stripped Anakin, that was it. I mean, it's like he did strip any ship, if you think about it. Um, it was just bombs away and guns away, and that's it. Took them out. Not a problem. So, and then once Anakin was gone, I was like, oh, I could do, oh, no, I can't. Anakin's gone. <laughs> Tranquility could have done something here and there. But, no. So, yeah. Not impressed with Anakin. Um, I think I tripped almost any commander on the Rebel Republic, sorry, I'm doing what Ben does, on the Republic side, and um, over Anakin, in my eyes, I would, more survivable. Again, we do have one player, um, Sir Chicken, who probably can make up a better fleet and probably would be an interesting one to, person to watch play Anakin, in my eyes. Ben? 
Yeah, so this well, is only one game. Yeah. Um, so we only have one use case. The you know the jury's still out. Still have a lot more tests to run. Yeah. But you could say what happened. I expected to happen. It's mm -hmm. Anakin is so one note. He is powerful. I mean, he dropped Nita really fast. When I chose to attack him, he was able to double Savo back, do some damage, and then on his turn, do a double tap attack mm -hmm. and kill him. But that wasn't before Nita did his work. And because Rob did that, he had spent out all of his defense tokens, including both Savos, yep. which then freed up need to come with my squads on my next activation to then just strip them down to nothing. So it's... <laughs> Whenever I've... When we had Anakin debuted on our Ozark Mountain Tournament series um, last month and Aaron brought him, we said, just try him out. We just want to see Anakin. And yeah. Aaron won. I mean, he obliterated everyone he played, but... That, just throw out some tough love to, you know, Buster was one of them, one of the new guys was one of them. I mean, y'all yeah. just ran right at Anakin. I I don't understand whenever you have... <laughs> the, anyway, to me, it's such a simple thing, and Aaron does it too. Maybe it's because we were both... I was sort of in the military. He is in the military. In military tactics, you rarely want to just run right, right at your enemy. You want to flank them. You want to go around the side to control your engagement. And I, you don't... I really strongly encourage people to... When you see someone like Anakin, it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Deploy to a corner and just, you know, negotiate like, the flank. Don't just line up right across when, of course, you're going to lose if you do that. It's, uh, anyway, that's just some frustrations that I'm seeing when I'm watching other people play. And it's, uh, the tactic I used, yes, you have to be more careful with your maneuvering and activation order because if you make a mistake, you're in trouble, but... If I decided to line right up across from Rob, Rob would have steamrolled me. He would have tabled me, and I would have done nothing to him. Yeah. Um, so, because of Anakin's ability and the way that this fleet was built, I had to deploy more um, discreetly and, cautiously. and more cautiously and play a more cautious game. But I would argue you want to do that almost every time you play the game. Right. Um, I would do that. The tactic I used today against Anakin, I would use against almost any other fleet I faced, except mm -hmm. an Onager. The Onager would be the only one where I would rush it. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I would probably play the exact same way every time, no matter what fleet I'm facing. And Anakin is at such a... I think Anakin is a disadvantage. Yes. Because he's so one-note. He's so shoehorned into one thing he does. And yes, Sloan is uniquely positioned. Yeah. But... Um, with Sloan, Anakin gets one really good shot off like Rob did, and then he's yeah. neutered for the rest of the game. Right. So it's, uh, but even without Sloan, if, you know, Rob did that hit against me, against Nita, if I didn't have Sloan, I would have some other commanders, some other setups. Right, whatever. Yeah. I would still hit him again. All of his defense tokens are exhausted. Then Rob has to think, ooh. What do I burn? What do I burn? Do right. I want to burn my salvos? I, right. It's now a choice he has to make, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't, I could potentially kill Anakin right, right away. Or if he does burn them, that means next round, Anakin's Don't neutered. Yep. So he's so one note. Um, I'll be honest, hey, I, I'm with Rob. I'd pick Plo Koon oh, yeah. over Anakin. I'd pick Bale over Anakin. I'd pick Luminara over Anakin. I'd pick Yularen over Anakin. Obi-Wan. Possibly even Obi-Wan over <laughs> yeah. Anakin. I think Anakin is... I don't think this is not, I, I he, He's fun. Worst, it's it's I mean, fun. Right. It's a gimmick. And it's the it's th thing against like facing Onagers. If you're facing someone that does, has not faced it before and is, you know, doesn't, you know, is just not familiar with it. Right. You're going to have the clear advantage because they don't know how to deal with it. Right. But when you're playing at a high level, people are going to know how to deal with Anakin. Um regardless of the fleet they bring. Right. So, anyway, enough on Anakin, but just overall, when, not even just when you're facing Anakin, when you're playing the game, try to think of, instead of just lining up across from each other and just running at each other and just see how the dice work, yep. think about your maneuvering tactics. Think about flanking your opponent. Try to 
do your engagements one ship at a time with your opponent. Because that's what happened here today. I was able to engage the Acclimator first. Yep. And then I was able to engage Anakin second. And Rob was never able to concentrate his firepower at the same time. No. So it's... No. Try to have that thinking in whenever you're deploying, when you're seeing your opponent across the table, and regardless of who the commander is, but especially with Anakin. Right. So. Now, in this case, though, <laughs> he's bringing a, you know, you had a bigger fleet than I did, so you out easily out um, think. Right. But but it, but, but um, I knew you. He was going to pick a corner, but what corner was he going to pick? If I picked a corner myself. He would have been on the opposite corner, just such as squadrons out, and that and those um, aquatins could move quite quickly. Didn't have to. I mean, they could just move really maneuver. So, like I said, I put in the middle because I knew he'd pick one side or the other, and I had to go one side or the other. And yeah, and I was trying. And actually, I I maneuvered them pretty well. Tranquility was really out of position. Um, but uh, I like to think that I actually moved the other two really well um, and tried to get in there and do what I did or do what I was supposed to do, um, take them out one at a time. And I got lucky with the Gazanti, meaning that he had to move it there, removed it, took damage from the uh, X-Corth, and then you took some shields from the debris. And I luckily got two accuracies and just took it out of the water. But, no, like he said, you gotta go for the sides and stuff. You gotta plan it out ahead of time in a way. That was just a very hard way to plan with this MSU and squadrons you put down slowly and everything else. And I didn't know exactly where he's gonna be, except for one of the two corners. And yes, I rushed in fast. Because I know if I didn't, he'd just eat me alive. I mean, those Arkertons, they're nothing to laugh at. Um, they got real long range, which anybody knows me, I love, love Akbar. So they're like an Akbar ship to me, and I know what they can do. And Ben did it perfectly today. Okay? I mean, he swung it around and just sailed around and just orbited and took his shots when he needed to. Didn't matter if he only had one shot, even, the swivel mounts. Um, he took them right when he needed to. And that's, that's the way you gotta do it. Um, uh, I need to get more practice with these uh, space pigs here. But uh, <laughs> navigation really did help. And I really wish I had done navigation the whole entire time. But um, I need intensified firepower on the tranquility. So anyways, I feel like I was trying to do what I did. Yes, if Ben did put up a front, if he put it right directly in front of me, he must have another card up his sleeve, or he was having a bad day, one or the other. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that he would not have survived. I already know that. But that was the best position I could think of at the time to put in. Whether it was the right one or not, I don't know. What do you think? If I was playing your, if we had the fleet swapped and I was out deployed, I would deploy to a corner. That's what I do every time, because it for it allows me to ensure that I keep my opponent's fleet in front of me and it makes it harder for them to flank me. If I deploy in the center and I'm out deployed and I know that they're gonna go to a corner, mm -hmm. it'll make it easier for them to surround me. If I deploy in a corner and keep them in front of me yep. at an angle, even if they deploy the opposite corner, it's basically like we're deployed lined up against each other again. Okay. So now we are, in, and I can have more opportunities since we have a longer table to play with to use maneuvering to keep my fleet together and keep the enemy in front of me and prevent them from getting on my flanks. Good point. Um, Good to know. Good to learn. Yeah. Cause, and that's just one of my, you know, uh, um, I'm just one person with <laughs> thoughts, but that's my thoughts on overall strategy. If you're out deployed and you deploy in the center, you're really giving your opponent the opportunity to outflank you and surround you. Um, if you deploy in the corner, you now have right. all your sides guarded. You have more opportunity to um, adjust to what they're doing because it's a longer table. Mm -hmm. If they deploy to the, op the direct opposite yeah. corner of you, that's to your advantage then. Because then they're now boxed in as well with you. And usually, if you're out deployed, it means you have bigger ships and right. more direct firepower. And that's a disadvantage to the person with the mm -hmm. um, deployment advantage. So that's just my recommendation is that if you are out deployed, there's no way you're going to be able to out deploy your opponent, see where they're going first. Pick a corner, keep your formation tight, 
and then see and then see what they're doing then you can react so good point good to know good to keep in mind thank you so yep so always learning and you know even i'm always learning guys so even though i play ben spend about once a week uh (laughs) i'm constantly learning and he's constantly learning himself um because he didn't always go for the corner always in the past um now he has seen that and he uses it and now i'm like okay time for me to learn how to do the same or counter it um which is basically doing what he said from what i understand anyways yeah but uh no it's so at this fleet yes he could have done the same yeah um yeah interesting to see if we switch sides but i don't think we will do that um he doesn't have time for it he has, he has to practice and such for the tournament yeah, and i don't know if i'll ever run anakin because i rarely i usually run empire and whenever i run republic i want to run what i enjoy and right. i like running squads so i'd be plo Koon or yularen i would mm-hmm. maybe only run anakin just to try him once just to see but uh yeah it's kind of like with an onager i don't really like running onagers because i feel like it's a cheat um Onager Star Destroyers I do like because I think they're costed appropriately. I might run an Onager Star Destroyer at some point, not the test bed version. But it's like same thing with Anakin. But also, I don't want to run Anakin because I'm shoehorned into one style of play. Right. There you so go, there's see. no flexibility there. But right. Anyway, I've waxed too much. Uh, you guys know my opinion on Anakin. This is only Sorry. one test case. Yep. Um, I am going to try it. And please, challenge me. Email me at maildownsizeit at, at gmail.com. With any fleet, so I can practice before June 10th, uh, TTS, um, we'll set up, you know, uh, most weeknights, I'm going to be free over the next two weeks, and uh, we'll get those live streams up and practice games in, and if you want to bring Anakin, if you guys like Anakin, good with Anakin, I I need more practice against him, because more people are going to bring him, and with this MSU fleet, it's much more, I can't make mistakes, because... Right. When I'm playing with like a big Star Destroyer, like I usually like to, if I make a mistake, the Star Destroyer can take the, you know, my Hit. mistake and not be a problem. So I need the practice of being on my toes and thinking about everything I'm doing. So, mm-hmm. And I think I like this better than my other option with Vader and having the Architons practically naked because having Krennic and Nita was very important, having oh, that dice yeah. mitigation. Oh, yeah, and I don't think having Vader as his, the damage that he can bring in the Defender would have added much value. So, I think I really like this fleet composition. Um, but your guys' thoughts, let me know what you think, your suggestions on my fleet composition going into the Texas Open Online in about a week and a half by the time this video comes out. And reminder about the giveaway, don't forget to subscribe and comment. And also, don't forget about our channel partners, Admiral Tater and Baron of Dice. Use those discount codes you're seeing on the screen now. Yes, yes. Please go support them when you want to get, get custom dice. Or if you want to get Admiral Tater's custom gear, use those discount codes and yeah. support the business. Um, all right, well, well, thanks for the game. Thanks well, for thank the you, for te- being a, kind of a guinea pig to test out against Anakin. <laughs> on two so, more than one way. Yeah, on more than one way. If you need to test my <laughs> tournament fleet I'm practicing with. Uh-huh. And thank you guys for watching. I look forward to your suggestions and to your challenges. Please send those in. So until next time, take it easy. Later.